Hi, so I have had a lot of local leaves in my freezer and I decided to make little booklets out of them using scrap um, watercolour paper that, I, that has been sitting in my pile of stuff for quite a long time. So in, I've, had two, I, I've had two pots of dye. Um, one is uh, onion, um, eucalyptus and a bit of iron and then the other was onion, eucalyptus and I added um, a copper pipe and a few rosebuds. So the, the one with the rosebuds actually turned out darker as you see. So I, I wrapped all of this up with um, some rusty lids and a good old brick and I've, I'm now unwrapping them. So I've got some interesting patterns and they're all stacked up together. So this one I wrapped up with um, lotus leaf. Okay, so you can see some patterns here. Oh, and the, uh, the booklets are actually stitched up with scrap fabrics and um, bits of thread. Um, this, this came from this came from the um, strawberry, strawberry leaf. So you can see that there. Um, oh, got a bit of eucalyptus. So you can see it formed a resist. I've got a eucalyptus leaf with some pattern here. And so as you can see, I actually stitched um, some scraps onto the booklet. This is actually a bit, still a bit wet. Um, oh, nothing here. I have got to add something here. I don't know what it was. But, um, yeah, so you can see the thread that I used didn't actually take on any of the dye, which is surprising because I used cotton thread. But the fabric did because this was originally um, pale in colour. Uh, it was originally this colour. Okay, so this one is a rambutan leaf um, from my friend's garden, uh, the tender gardener. So, yeah, I'm, I'm getting an interesting orangey colour here. I don't know what that comes from. Oh, I think I have something tucked on, tucked in underneath, maybe? <gasps> yes, I do. I can't even remember what this one is. Oh, it's onion. Okay, so this is onion. So it came through with a really, a bit of brown shade here. Okay, so these are going to actually be dried under the sun. Okay, so these are still a bit wet. So I actually boiled this stack for about 40 minutes. So it's a lot less than I would usually use to dye um, fabrics. Um, so about 40 minutes. Um, and then I took them out and then left them to dry. So eucalyptus. Um, so I'm really surprised how the, the strawberry, the tops of the strawberries um, can actually give um, colour. I wasn't expecting that. So this is really just an experiment. Okay, so here I have got Exora. So these are from the garden below. And mind you, I don't take the flowers from the plant itself. I just take them from the floor. We don't want to be taking them from the plant. Because bees and the butterflies need the flowers we don't we only take the ones from the floor so as you can see i've got this really interesting pattern from the exora they don't actually give color themselves it doesn't look like it i mean there's hints of yellow and pink but you can see that there's this, there's this amazing outline that it gives i really like this if i turn onto the other page very carefully because i don't want to break this oops i think i just tore it oh okay yay okay so more exora i think this was the one where i had i just put in a lot of exora leaves so See this amazing pattern? And this actually will provide a lot of inspiration for some stitching because I, I love the shadows. I love the shadows, I love the colours that are coming out of this. Then the final page, I hope you can all see this. Okay, final page is. Oh, okay, I have the eucalyptus. I'm not really sure why the eucalyptus is not giving any colour. I think, um, well, I use the brown leaves. Um, it should have some tannin coming out of it. Um, no idea. I mean, this is still an experiment. Um, but the neem leaves, oh, that's great. It's giving a green color there, which is awesome. And this actually, I think, I believe, came from the Ixora on the other side. So there's a hint of pink there, as you can see. Um, I love this. Okay, so this is the stitching that I did on the machine. Okay, that's book number two. Um, book number three. Okay, so as you can see, I've been using these bits of papers. Um, the stitching uh, for the booklets. Okay, so this was actually white. Um, so the rambutan actually gave it some color, okay, which is amazing. But the color didn't transfer onto the paper. And there's this this round shape here, this round, oh, uh, this circle, and that came um, because I had came about because I had a, a cap on there, and so that acted as a as a resist. Okay, so in here, I have lots of eucalyptus sleeves. I was actually expecting to see lots of streaks, but um, from streaks from the leaves, but I'm not getting anything. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've got little marks here, but other than that, I'm wondering whether it's because the leaves came from the freezer, 
Although if it was in the freezer, then the, the cells of the leaves would have actually broken down um, and the color would have come out uh, a lot easier. But uh, no. Okay, on here, uh, neem leaves again. So uh, the neem leaves actually came from a friend's garden, um, Olivia, the tender gardener, as I mentioned before. And another set here. Okay, so, mm, yeah, oh, okay, so this is felt, wool felt, so took up some of the color. And there's the, I used a cap here as well, a metal cap. Put this at the back. Uh, more booklets. Okay, so I did some um, dining here. I love dining. Um, oops. Ah, uh, okay, so... Oh, this one came out beautifully, as you can see. And I think this should be another page here, because I see some paint coming through. Um, I wonder if the, the flower's on the inside. I might have tucked it on the inside. Yes, I... Oh, no, I didn't. So I'm wondering where that paint came from. It can't have been... It could have been from... Here, or maybe it's on the other side. So it's the strawberry. Actually, it's the, um, the strawberry leaf. The strawberry top. So the strawberry top, the color actually went through onto here. That's amazing. And I actually also took some bougainvillea because I heard that bougainvilleas actually gave off a pink color. But um, uh, obviously not in my case. Maybe it's a different type of bougainvillea. Very slight color. Um, yeah. Uh, I did put the bougainvilleas down in, in the freezer. But maybe it's, it's it wasn't as intense. Um, not as intense as like, you would expect it to be uh, when you're doing either printing. So that's the other booklet. And then for the final one, that came out of um, one of the, the pots. So this was the pot without the rosebuds or the copper pipe. Um, I used some bamboo wool to do some stitching. I'm not sure why this came out. Um, but the circle you see here is because the brick that I had had a circle. So um, all, the, all the dye went here and um, where the brick had laid on top of the, the booklet, it, it acted as a resist, so prevented the, the colour from going onto the fabric. But I love, I love how, how, it, how it came out. Um, so, uh, so another bougainvillea, nothing much actually, I mean, um, yeah, I'm a little surprised and disappointed. Uh, okay, you have to be very careful, because I just realised that this is actually falling off because it's wet, so I can't handle it too roughly. So another strawberry top, love the colours. Okay, so the colours are, some people might find the colours a bit dull, I actually find them very pretty. Um, it's really subjective, um, but yeah. Oh, I think I should have um, added some rosebud leaves into this. I might have done that for the other step, I can't remember. But um, okay, so here I've got some neem leaves, and as you can see, because it's starting to get wet, this one's coming out, this, this piece of fabric, but hopefully it'll stay. So, uh, neem leaf, neem leaf is very good. Ah, let me try and get this out. Wait. Okay, and I added some onions. So onions are really good for dyeing. And I glue these leaves, and I have no idea why not they're not transferring colour onto the paper or even the fabric actually, because I've always had success with that. So that's one of the stacks. Okay, so now I'm going to just push this aside. I'm going onto this one. So this one was actually put into the pot that contained eucalyptus, onion, rose buds, and a copper pipe. Um, copper pipe. I just added it in for fun because I know it does. Um, someone told me it imported a blue colour, but I, I wasn't expecting a blue colour, it was more just to... It acts a bit like iron, it um, facilitates the colours, um, it assists the colours in getting into the, the material. Now, I'm not really sure about the science, so I'll have to look that up, but um, as you can see it's a lot darker compared to the ones that I had in the other pot. Um, so I need to unwrap this. It's a bit like unwrapping a present, so you'll have to bear with me. Um, I think I just, I'll just have to cut it, um, but I, it's always good to reuse your string, um, because there's no point in throwing away good string. So always remember where you tied it, or how tight you, make sure you're able to untie your string. And if you do cut in the wrong place, you can always tie it back up together. Okay, so this one, oops, oops. So... Okay, so I can't remember how many. I think I have six in here. So, oh, okay. So, this one, oh, this one came out very different, as you can see. Okay, so I'm just going to carefully, maybe I'll just shift the others to one side. I'm just going to carefully unwrap this. So I'm just going to do this in the other video. 